Hey, Faith family, welcome to the Beyond Sunday podcast at Calvary Bible, where we go beyond the Sunday sermon to explore some rabbit holes and to bring some biblical truths to the surface. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. Okay, we got Austin here this week with us. Austin, thanks for for sitting in on the podcast. Thanks for having me on. I was looking forward to it. Yeah, so you have a lot more hair than Randy. Yeah, believe it or not. Yep, we'll just stop there for both of your sakes. Um... And we have, we've got an episode in front of us. We don't know what we're doing. We're just joking about, here's the two of us sitting in talking about Randy's sermon and Randy's not here. Yep. So I, he won't listen to this. That's yeah. So it's okay. We get the fun of dissecting his message without him being here. Yeah. So. And there's no pressure. All the people, if we go too far off, people will will tell him what we said. That's true. I'm sure we'll get so, back to him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he won't listen to this. So um, anyway, it's all good. Um, so Austin, to get started here, I sometimes bring a, a curveball to Randy, and I've got one for you. All right. I'm going to whistle a tune, and I want to see if you know it. Oh, boy. All right. All right. Wow, this is a curveball. Ties in. Here we go. Yep. Name they, that, name they that tune. It. They, they know, it. know it. Would I have grown up singing this song? I'll give you a hint. It's a hymn. Yeah, that's what out of it would be my guess. You don't know it. I don't think I do. I have a guess, but I don't think it's right. So it's embarrassing. Rich and I did like a name that tune um, during the pandemic, and he killed me. <laughs> so I, I have uh, grace for you. Thank it's you. The tune. Jesus saves. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't think I'd have got Jesus that one. Saves, Jesus yeah. saves. Yeah. I'm going to stop singing. It's number 306 in the hymnal. Oh, I could have told you that. Yeah. Well, sorry. I didn't <laughs> ask you that. I gave you the hard part. Um, but the reason I bring that up is because I was thinking about rewriting a hymn. Mm. And um, it goes, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. But I was thinking about rewriting it based on Jude. And uh, that lyric should read, Jesus saves. And destroys, because uh, verse five, Jesus is bringing the heat. Um, so that's right. I'm thinking about getting into songwriting. Those guys, I think there's a future there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, you, me, and the guitar. That's right. And whistling. That's right. All right. So enough with that junk. Let's get into let's get into the sermon from Sunday. Yeah, and you had a, a quote, a Randy quote that you thought was interesting and stuck with you. So let's let's let that right. So um, at the beginning of uh, Randy's lesson, he said something along the lines of uh, people the people who don't like God's judgment usually run to Jesus, mm-hmm. and I found that really fascinating uh, because I think it's a really true statement. Um, specifically, like. I've heard multiple people say or like in different articles say that, you know, the God of the Old Testament is like this God of anger and wrath. But, you know, the God of the New Testament is love. Uh, And so it's like if they don't want to talk about the judgment or, you know, Mm -hmm. really have that be a part of their reality, then they just run to Jesus, who is seen as this God of of love. Um, and so I think it can be easy for people, you know, if they want to pick and choose what they believe, you know, if they don't like this thought of eternal judgment, then yeah. they're going to run to Jesus who, you know, seems to be this God of love and acceptance. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, once you start believing that, you know, I think, you know, not believing this, you know, punishment or mm-hmm. eternal That's judgment. It. Yeah, it's a slippery slope because if you're rejecting that, who knows? what else you might reject because if you're just believing you know jesus is this god mm-hmm. of love and acceptance it can take you down a whole bunch of different you know slippery yeah. slopes and i think so that's one of the things throughout this whole series that stuck out to me is that um some of these things that we're talking about that we're contending for in the faith it's that we when you start to ignore portions of scripture or certain verses or texts the this the slope is slippery because i think what makes that so i don't know important is that we want to be good readers of scripture and not ignore ignore parts and so um i was thinking about when we think of jesus 
uh, or seeing maybe artist renditions of him. Yeah, it's often, you know, like the one that comes to mind is him sitting with children right. on his yeah. knee, you know, and he's got one on his lap. Mm -hmm. And we don't see the ones where, you know, he's flipping the table in the temple. Yeah. You know, that that should be, you know, Picasso or Rembrandt. <laughs> they should have just whipped one of those up for us. Yeah. Or in, you were talking about the one in Revelation. Right. Yeah, like I was saying to Jonathan earlier, I was like, you know, you read about Jesus in the Gospels and he uh -huh. seems like this, you know, certain type of, you know, God. And then if you flip over, we were just in Jude yesterday, if you flip over to Revelations, you get, mm -hmm. you know, a whole different picture of who Jesus is. You know, he's coming back with like a sword out of his mouth and, you know, on a horse and yeah, he's got you know, tattoo fire. On his thigh. And, uh, yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. All sorts of that stuff. Yeah. So not, not a God to be reckoned with. Right. Um, or thought not at of all. lightly. And, yeah. Yeah. And I think, I think too, like that's, that's a dangerous thing um, to only pick and choose certain attributes of God. And yeah. oftentimes that's what um, like someone who is uh, like an atheist, for example, like they'll, they'll come up with an argument to deny God's existence and they'll hmm. base their argument from, and they'll ignore certain parts of it. I, I'm talking in shadowy language here. So let me be specific. Uh, one uh, one common argument is, well, if God is good and he's all powerful and evil exists, then God can't exist. Yeah. So you can't have a good God who's all powerful and have evil at the same time. You know, these hurricanes yeah. or uh, the virus or whatever, because if God was good and all powerful, he'd stop those things. Mm -hmm. Therefore, God doesn't exist. But they ignore these other attributes of God you know, such as his justice and his wrath and his vengeance. And um, so it's a, it's a narrow view of God that we want the big picture. Yeah. And actually going off of that, I've, uh, you know, I know usually you're usually the one who, you know, asks the questions. Mm -hmm. I have a question for you because I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. All right. Um, specifically here, like this whole concept of understanding God's love and his judgment, because we know those are both like, characteristics or attributes mm -hmm. of God. And yeah. so I think a lot of people have a hard time kind of understanding them together. So what would your thoughts be just of how you make sense of the fact that God is love, but at the same time, he is, you know, good to judge, you know, he's a God of, you know, justice as well. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think um, like my mind quickly goes back to Genesis. And when you see the account of like, um, you know, Adam and Eve breaking God's law and, you know, taking themselves out of his good care. Um, he has to respond mm -hmm. um, to not respond would devalue his holiness. Yeah. You know what I mean? So God has mm -hmm. this holy, righteous standard that when it's transgressed or crossed or, or you know, disrespected, essentially, um, to not do anything about it would... Um, would devalue his holiness. Um, the way I think about it sometimes is like if I, if if you or I valued something, let's use let's use your forerunner for example. Yeah, oh, okay. I like that example. Yeah, right. We love Austin's forerunner. Okay, um, Rebecca wants to buy it. <laughs> I'm just going to throw that out there. Uh, so Rebecca loves your forerunner. I love it. You love. It. We all That's love right. this forerunner. It's a great great vehicle. Someone comes you know, into the church parking lot one day and just keys the crap out of it mm -hmm. and just scratches that whole thing up. You come out and you see it. If you responded like kind of nonchalant, like, well, oh, you know, it's no big deal. Yeah. What would that attitude say about the value, how you value your forerunner? Right. It would, you know, it would be like, man, I don't really value it that much if yeah. I didn't care if somebody beat Yeah, no big deal. Up. But like if, if, if I know you well enough, Right. And how much you and I value that car. Yeah. We'd come out and we'd be like, are you kidding me? You know, so they slash mm -hmm. the tires, they key the thing. We would be devastated. We would be angry. We'd be getting on like church security footage, like looking for. That's right. Uh, you know, the perpetrator. And then yeah. we would hunt them down and torture them. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Okay. Torture might right. be strong. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we would... We would we'd make find them. them, we'd make them pay. Yeah. Um, hmm. We would want justice to be done. Right. And so I, think, yeah. I don't know if that answers your question, but you know, like, 
to balance the the love and the justice out. Um, that's that's how I think about it, at least. Yeah, no, that's helpful for me. So I was thinking through that yesterday for Randy's lesson, and I was like, I'd be curious to hear what your thoughts were for yeah. that. So. Yeah. Hopefully you didn't give any of the, the youth kids any ideas about, you know, what to do to my four runners. No, so you, you that was all that shit. Yeah, that's right. Man, it's over for you. You <laughs> they, will they know the punishment. They you, will feel the wrath. Yeah, you'll pay. All right. So um so we were in Jude, um verses three and four were kind of a recap, but then the main yep. part of the text was verses five through ten. Um and so it says that, you know, Jesus he saved uh you know, the people out of the land of Egypt, but he also destroyed them. And actually, I was talking to uh, someone yesterday, and they said the King James, and this is going to be a Randy question, um, the King James says in verse 5 that the Lord destroyed them, but the ESV says that Jesus um, is the one who's saving and destroying. So I actually, was. I mean, I know hmm. I'm dangerous enough with Greek to know that it actually reads Lord. Uh, in the Greek text, but sometimes I know there's textual variants, like depending on the manuscript, right. it, it changes. Um, and so I don't know why the ESV chose Jesus, but for what it's worth, um, the two Greek texts that I read both said Lord. Um, so might have to bring that back to Randy next week. That's see if great, he has any thoughts about that. That actually did stood out to me as well. I was curious to know what his thoughts would be on that. Yeah. And this is Jesus's half brother, right? Right, Jude. Right, you know, and not throwing him under right. the bus because he is who he is. Um, but anyway, so so verse five, um, we we're talking about false teachers, and yeah, and you have a question uh, in front of you, and we we're talking about just some of the false teachers um, that are out there today. So I'll let you ask the question, and we'll flesh it out yeah so the one question that i had just in terms of thinking through the sermon practically was you know if the whole context of the verses we were talking about yesterday were um false teachers um then what does that mean for us and like specifically like what, what would it look like for us as you know individuals going to a church or you know reading stuff online uh what would it look like for us to be on guard uh of false teachers or you know what do we need to do to prepare ourselves or be aware um, just like to practically, you know, be on guard yeah. for those individuals or some of those teachings that they might bring in. Yeah. Like, I think, I think one of the first things in my mind is to just listen with a critical ear. And some people I think are more naturally bent to just being critical. Um, I'm probably one of them. Uh, I, I'm not that I'm a great thinker, but I'm always skeptical when I hear something on the internet, mm. I'm like, eh, like, what's the what's the source of that? And yeah. it, it uh, you know, it can drive people crazy because I just I I don't take things as they come. I'm always skeptical, I guess. Um, so, but at least to listen critically, so that you're not just receiving everything that yeah. comes in. Um, yeah, I don't know. How do you how do you do with that? Yeah, I as I was thinking through that question for myself, I was, you know, I think one of the things I came back to was like, you know, we have God's word and that's what we're teaching from. Mm -hmm. um, so it's one of those, you know, and I think I've used this analogy before for the youth group, but it, like it helps me understand it. Like yeah. when you had individuals who like look for false currency mm -hmm. in order to, you know, find that. Yeah. You know, or, or know what it looks like. They need to study like a real dollar bill. Right. And so in order for us as Christians to know, you know, what false teaching might be, we mm -hmm. need to really ground ourselves in God's word. And so for me, that was just a real practical, you know, all right, Austin, if you want to be on guard or be careful about what you're hearing or what you're being taught, you need to take everything and, and uh, take it back to God's word to see how it lines up. Yeah. So, and even as like teachers too, we need to really, I mean, yeah. re be really careful that we're teaching God's word. Yeah. So. Well, and I think that's oftentimes that uh, like counterfeit analogy, at least the way I've heard it before is like, well, I know that this isn't, it's not Christianity and I can tell you the, the Jehovah's witness, like their, their flaw or um, where Islam thinks differently than us because I know Christianity, but the danger of the false teachers, to your point, um, is that, well, maybe to be more specific, is that they're, they're Christian and they're evangelical. Right. And so to even be more like fine-tuned in our understanding yeah. of what the original 
is so that we can pick out the counterfeit. Right. If I'm listening to someone in an evangelical Bible church or on a website or a, another podcast, whatever, yep. if I'm not thinking and listening critically, and if I'm not as familiar with God's word as I need to be, I'm yeah. going to be prone to, you know, taking something in that shouldn't be coming in. Right. And I've, I've heard um, one individual tell me this over and over again. He said, uh, if you believe a lie, then you live wrong. Uh, and so I just think that goes back to like, if we're, you know, believing this false teaching, whether, whether we know it or not, you know, believing that lie causes us to live wrong. And, and just taking that back to what we were talking about in the, the sermon yesterday, um, like if we don't believe mm -hmm. in the judgment of God, you know, that's going to have effects for the way that we live. You know, maybe we might not be quite as, you know, ready to go share the gospel with others because we, you know, don't see them as being judged at the end of the day. So it's just like, right. that's just a real practical, you know, small example. But, um, you know, if we believe a lie, we live wrong. So, yeah, well, and if we don't believe in God's wrath or judgment, we don't have the same level of fear of him that we absolutely all to. And I might live my life a little differently if Abs I don't fear him. Yeah, um, that's exactly right. And, yeah. and I should. Yeah. Um, another thought too, and I, I know we talked about this before, but I think one of the things that I really loved about how Randy finished up was he, he focused on the humility of mm -hmm. just, you know, as we read scripture and as we're teaching scripture, just like doing it with like a humble attitude and mindset. Uh, cause I think it could be easy for us to, you know, be really firm on our beliefs and not being willing to waver or having anybody speak into our lives. And so, yeah. you know, as we're reading scripture to do it with humility, because it is God's word and it's, you know, just a spiritual in nature. And so we need to have humility when we're reading it, but just also when we're listening and, mm -hmm. you know, getting input from others, it's important to, to do so with a humble mindset. I think it's a you know, oh, important yeah. aspect of it. Yeah, he's used that term a few times, hermeneutical That's humility. what it was. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. the term I was looking for. Yeah, and I think that's something I've appreciated about him over the years. And I've told him just the, there's not an arrogance. We don't want to read the Bible with an arrogance, and he doesn't. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, we know he's a bright, a bright guy, but he doesn't uh, read it with like a level of like, I've got the stake on truth. And yeah. If you don't, then, you know, so then you're wrong. But so there's a level of like respect for other people and the way they read the Bible yeah. and uh, humility about it. And there's really smart people who think differently than, than we do. Right. Um, but we want to be careful, especially about the essentials, those things at the center of our, our faith. Yeah, absolutely. To get them right. Um, yeah. Do you have anything else? Those were my big, thoughts and takeaways from, from the sermon yesterday? Yeah. So, I mean, we're getting to the end here, um, of our time, but I just, uh, it, it, it struck me the quote from Rob Bell, uh, about our sector or brand of Christianity yeah. being toxic because we believe in God's wrath. Yeah. And yeah, that was interesting. it's the same in the secular world too. So Rob Bell would be, I don't know if he'd consider himself, he, he would, he'd consider himself a Christian. I think I can say that confidently. Yeah. Um, but he has a different view of God than we do. And uh, he was really famous years ago in youth ministry for hmm. these videos, Numa videos. Have okay. you ever seen them? I don't think, uh, I might have off the top of my head. I, I want to say no. They described him as like these little short, um, like video parables. Um, hmm. And they were really good, um, but there was—I remember there being one that he, he said something that was like, "Oh, that's that's a little off." Yeah. So I actually had the youth group watch it and with a critical ear and yeah. like come back and say, "Okay, let's crit critique this." And did anything that he say raise a red flag? Yeah. And uh, I forget what the, what it was, but hmm. um, so anyway, but that's a little beside the point. Either way, his the quote that Randy read. Uh, was that this this way of seeing God and viewing God is is toxic because we believe people are going to hell. They're they're not going to be in God's presence for the rest yeah. of eternity. Hmm. And um, you know, I think the unfortunate thing is, um, you like whether we're right or wrong. Well, I'm losing my thought here. The unfortunate thing is, if we're right, 
then there's, you know, based mm. on the scripture, and so we believe we are, yeah. then people are going to hell, right. whether you like it or not. Right. And so that's that's the dangerous thing. And yeah. So, I mean, we, I think we as Christians need to, in our presentation, in our interaction with, you know, as we rub shoulders, you know, at a football game or with our neighbors or whatever, mm-hmm. we don't want to you know, be wrathful towards them, mm-hmm. um, but help them to understand that because of their sin, they, if they don't have, you know, repentance, if they don't have forgiveness based on the blood of Jesus, they're on the wrong side. Right. And so we, we care for them. It's actually love that drives hmm. um, evangelism. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And I just think getting back to what we were talking about earlier, just the importance of knowing and understanding, you know, the truth that, God is a God of love and also justice and judgment. And so, you know, living in light of both of those should shape the way that we live, you know, in our interactions with you know, people at school and sports teams and, you mm-hmm. know, family members. So I guess my last closing thought would mm-hmm. be that uh, as I was reading during my devotions this morning, something mm-hmm. that stood out to me was just about how like the Holy Spirit guides our speech and, you mm-hmm. know, in instances where we don't think we have the right words, yeah. especially like when we're mm-hmm. talking to non-believers. Yep. And so that struck me and I was like, you know what, if I, you know, believe mm-hmm. all of scripture, then I need to believe this as well as yeah. truth. And so just a final thought for me would just be um, like, as Christians, we can't cherry pick what we believe and what we don't believe. So you can't say, you know, you believe, you know, God is love and reject his justice. And so we got to live in light of, you know, the God of who scripture says that he is. So, mm-hmm. yeah. And as we teach others, whether formally, you know, in like a church class type setting or even just in our families or in our own evangelism, um, we want to make sure that we're we're doing it right. Yeah. You know, to the best of our ability that we're sticking to the scriptures, because otherwise we're we're in danger of being one of those false teachers. Yep. And uh, yeah. that's a scary place to Absolutely. be. Absolutely. Sobering thought. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that's good. I think we covered it all. Yeah. Got yeah. through it. I was, yeah, was going to say, I guess we'll find out what Randy thinks. Yeah. We'll find out one way or another. So. <laughs> yeah. And so actually, he's not here next week either. Oh. So this week, he's just gone for a couple days, right? Um but for the most part, I think he's working this week. But next week, he's on vacation. Mm, so depending so, on the re- so depending on the reviews of this week, yeah, I might or may not be here for next week. <laughs> you're locked in next week. So yeah, we'll be back. Actually, I'll be preaching on Sunday, and oh, we're going to be sweet. in Romans one. Good. So I'm looking forward to that. Good. And uh, write some more questions. Down. That's right. I'll prepare myself for next time. Yeah, then. that might be a little easier because. I'll be more familiar with the text. And I got to ask you the you. questions then. All right. We'll, That's we'll see how that goes. <laughs> All right, cool. All right. Thanks for joining us. We love you guys. We'll see you on Sunday, Wednesday, whenever we see you. Yep. We'll see you. Bye. Thanks again for joining us on today's episode. And remember, our Sunday sermons are meant to lead us to a life of worship beyond Sunday.